What is up everyone, JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you my full review of the Gonzo Firebird FB727S. Let's go ahead and take this one out of the box. Just in case you're wondering, I am actually changing the format of my videos. I actually will be unboxing them, carrying them, and using them to give you the full review at the same time that I'm doing the unboxing. And you may be asking yourself, well, why are you bothering to do the unboxing? Because I want you guys to get idea of what's coming with it, get to see what comes with the box, the size of the box, the presentation of the package still, without having to break it up over two videos. I feel like this way I'm becoming a little bit more efficient at being able to deliver the package experience so that you can kind of see again everything that comes in the package get to experience the unboxing and seeing everything that comes out with it and since I've already carried it cut with it um, handled it you will be able to get the full review I become more efficient and you don't have to check back for the review of this knife as if this is the only reason you're checking out the channel having said that if you are enjoying the content do me a favor leave a like consider subscribing and if you do decide to subscribe and support the channel don't forget to hit that notification bell and set that to also get alerts whenever all content drops you can choose which videos you want to but if you don't pick all then youtube is not going to notify you when those drop all right having said that let's go ahead and run through the specs and we will resume the normal process and this will be the format going forward the gonzo has a 3 inch 440c blade 4.25 inch g10 handles for an overall length of 7.25 inches which is right in that wheelhouse of what i constitute as a very friendly edc package and the claim there was no claim weight actually i couldn't find the claim weight anywhere on amazon and it could be on their page but i wasn't sure i weighed it at 2.9 ounces when i was yep checking all of the specs it was really hard to actually find the specs on this particular one so i had to do all of that myself really quickly before we do the comparable uh, comparison knives this actually looks very similar and is designed very similar to the Ontario Rat 2. And I'm gonna leave space up here on purpose so that I can really quickly here just do a screenshot comparison so that you can kind of see the similarities. The blade shape is very similar and so is the line for the jimping and where the thumb studs are placed and so is the contouring around here. Very, very similar. This just has a taller blade and is a little higher up on the handle. Not quite so much contouring down here where the thumb stud is on the Ontario Rat 2 and it has a little bit more hardware on the Ontario Rat 2 but both are steel liners. This one has the G-Lock versus the Frame Lock on the Rat 2 and they um, Ontario Rat 2, if I recall correctly, is four-way pocket clip adjustable, and this one is only right-hand, left-hand tip-up only. So I just wanted to cover that really quickly because I noticed immediately it reminded me of the Ontario Rat, which is a pocket knife that I love very, very much. So nothing wrong with that. Let's run through quickly and look at the comparison knives. First up is going to be the Spyderco Yojimbo 2. This one is the DLT training exclusive. Next up is going to be the Spyderco Shaman. This one here is the S30V variant. It has the dark matter, fat carbon scales made by Carbonized over on Instagram, and they are in the skinny format. As you can see, this is just much smaller than both. And the Ojimbo 2 is very, very close in size to the Para 3, but the Para 3 being a little bit shorter, so it would be really close for this comparison here. Let's move these guys out of the way. Not quite sure. Next up, we're going to bring out a knife that is highly comparable and will be coming out for the comparable knives. That is going to be the Benchmade Bug Out. This one has the Flytanium scales over at flytanium.com for those that are wondering and or interested in where I got the scales for this particular knife. Next up, I'm going to bring out the Case Kinsua. This one here has the S35 VN blade with the black aluminum scales. This one here can be had for $115 and it is a steal of a deal for those materials and what you're getting as far as action. You can see the Gonzo is just smaller than both of these knives. So those are the mid comparisons that I like to do. And last but not least, I'm gonna bring out my budget-friendly cheap knives. First up is going to be the Kubi Royal KU321, which is gonna compare really nicely to this knife as well, even though it is not a crossbar lock knife. And last but not least is going to be my Buck 
110 plus this one here having the 420 c blade steel and the frn handles both these well the ke 321 you can have for under 50 the buck for 28 dollars which is a comparable price point so really good actual comparison uh, uh yeah comparison knives to give you the size reference but really nice for the price point as well now really quickly what i'd like to do is just bring the benchmade bug out back out here the only reason i like this knife as far as a comparable knife and an alternative knife is because it does have that crossbar lock mechanism now some of the differences you're going to notice here is you have the knockdown on the flat titanium scales but you do get a little bit of that from the factory scales that you get on the bug out so a little bit cleaner access and the spring tension is much lighter and smoother in operation although i've only had this for about a week now carried it for a few days it came super tight out of the box i did have to loosen it up a little bit but i did not add any lube one thing i did notice when i loosened it it improved the action, but you still have this funny little hang up here where you get a lot of resistance as you get to the close and it does um, make it tough to, to consistently or yeah, consistently close it when operating the access lot. You have to remember to put some ass behind it to get it to close or just remember to hold the lock bar down longer to get it to close on here. I think the other part of that too, not only is the pivot location probably not perfectly placed on this knife but it is smaller and lighter so you do have just a little bit more effort going into the closing of the knife you have to you know deliberately put more wrist into closing it and you see i'm talking and doing that trying to just fluidly do it and you can see it's just not as consistent let me move my hand as it is with the bug out which is smoother on closing but for deployment you do need more wrist behind it and again i have mine just tight enough to keep it from having hardly any play you see it has just a hint of movement that's to keep it nice and smooth for opening and closing but i do feel like the overall experience on the bug out is smoother of course you are talking about a huge price difference on this knife um, what would I recommend in place of this? The first knife I'm going to recommend at the price point that you can pick this Gonzo up at that I like just a little bit better. It is not going to be a crossbar lock, but it is going to be the Reich P801. This one has 14C28N with a stainless steel frame lock. Really nice access to the lock bar, and it does have ceramic bearings and a very well done deep carry pocket clip whereas the pocket clip on the gonzo itself is not deep carry it is more of a shallow carry and it does make room for that lanyard hold however the reich is going to be a larger size so if you're looking for that three inch that's probably where i would point you more so towards the royal the royal is fifty dollars and it does give you the thumb hole for deployment um, if you're looking for a crossbar lock experience, what I would recommend is actually going to be a knife that I discovered recently, and that's going to be the Free Tiger FT2103. Now, it is a little bit bigger, but just barely. I recommend this because it does have a really well done D2 steel blade. It has a good grind. It actually reminds me, it actually makes me think of what would happen if the Wii Banter got together with the bug out and had a baby. This is totally what it makes me think of when you look at some of the design aesthetics and cues. But another reason that I picked this one is because it is just a thinner, slicier knife. It does have a little bit more blade length and presence there. The edge on this seems to have been seems to be done a little bit better than it is on the Gonzo, but the action on this very much reminds me of the bug out. And it also is a little bit easier to deploy than the bug out and the Gonzo. The one thing that I will say that it's a complaint about all of these knives is it's not very good access to the lock bar and they are they do feel a little hard because you have to the strength the spring strength is a little bit stronger so you have to pull down and hold it a little bit tighter to be able to get these um, knives to actuate so 
I do I do think they're a little bit sharp. I don't think the access is very good to them. They're not super comfortable, but honestly, I never heard of this brand. I actually discovered it when I was looking at Gonzo's crossbar locks and because they were the identical price point, I wanted to check both of these knives out. So I would recommend probably if you have to have a crossbar lock and you're looking to spend less than $30 to experience it, for me, the Free Tiger, it does feel a little bit nicer in hand, a little bit better room for me personally, because when you look at the Gonzo itself, the Gonzo's just a little small, and I'm starting to fall off the back of the knife in the, in the position that you normally would, and I'm not comfortable choking up, because that's not really a, cho a choke up point. So this is just a little small for me. The 440 seems to be treated really well and has a good edge. It does, the inconsistency of operating the crossbar lock or G lock in this instance, just a little disappointing. So I would probably say, look at the Free Tiger FT2103. I think this one is a little bit better ergonomically, a little bit, but I like the um, blade shape a little bit better. It's a little high on the Gonzo, so it's come that gets that tip way up high. So when you go for utility cuts, you're not quite having to go as far up on the knife to get to the tip, which I really like as well. So, what could I recommend this knife? Sure, I mean for twenty eight dollars, it's not a bad buy. I think the Free Tiger is a little bit better of a buy, and I would probably recommend that. I think the Reich is a phenomenally better buy. At just $31, $32, you're getting 14C28 in stainless steel frame lock and superb action. So I would recommend or steer you towards that. But again, I think if you're looking at this knife, you're looking to experience that crossbar lock. And I would say neither one, the Sativian ST124 and the Gonzo Firebird 727S are not as smooth or fluid as the bug out doesn't it's not even comparable to how it feels again keep in mind i am angling down for this um tabletop review but if i bring this up just a little bit you'll see i'm able to more consistently when i'm able to bring the knife up more i'm able to more consistently deploy and close the knife once i get my hand in the right position but what I have found is that it's a lot more inconsistent with the Gonzo. And again, those studs just not very comfortable at all. Overall, I think it's a decent knife, but I think there's just some better options out there for me personally. The last thing I'll touch on is that the branding on the back is not that bad. It's small print, but they have a lot of print on there. And then the flames on there to me, just not my thing. I like the fact that Benchmade pulls it back a little bit, but I even think the Benchmade bug out emblem is a little proud for me. I would have liked them to even make that a little bit smaller if it was possible. And not to say that the Free Tiger is any better, right? Free Tiger looks just like the Gonzo, but this part is a little bit better, right? You have this way back out of the way closer to the thumb studs, which I think is a better look overall. Anyway, that's my review of the Gonzo Firebird 727S. If you enjoyed, again, the video, do me a favor and leave that like. Thanks to everyone out there that's already supporting the channel. I really appreciate all the support. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.